Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a raspberry sherbet. A sherbet is a cross between an ice cream and a sorbet, and this is what it looks like. Beautiful rose color, and it's got this really nice tangy sweet raspberry flavor and the consistency is kind of grainy but yet creamy and the best part is this is really easy to make so you just need a, a bowl and we're going to start with 12 ounces of raspberries now i prefer i just buy the a bag of uh ras frozen unsweetened raspberries and but you could use fresh the reason I like frozen unsweetened is because it's, you can buy them all year round and plus the flavor is very consistent. So if you buy the same brand, you always know it's going to taste the same. So like I said, you need 12 ounces, which is 340 grams of raspberries. Now, if you're using the frozen, thaw them out over a strainer like I have here. And then you need to just gently press to remove the juice. Now, some people just like to leave the seeds in. If you do want your um, sherbet to have seeds, then you don't have to do this step. Personally, I don't, I like to take them out. So just press them through a strainer into a large measuring cup. And then that will give you about one cup, 240 milliliters of raspberry juice. And then you're just going to throw away those seeds. And then to that, we're going to add two thirds of a cup, 135 grams of granulated white sugar, or you could use a super fine sugar here. Now you may want to taste at the end, depending on the tartness of your raspberries, you may want to add a little more sugar. It's really up to you. And then a sherbet has dairy in it. That is the main difference between that and a sorbet, which is mainly just the fruit juice and water and sugar. So we're going to add one cup, 240 milliliters of milk. Now you could use, depending on how rich and creamy you want your sherbet to be, you could use either the full fat or reduced fat. I'm actually using a reduced fat, what I call like a 2%. And then also what I'm going to add is a half a cup 120 milliliters of half and half cream, and that is cream with about a 12% butterfat content. Just add a little bit of richness, not too much, but a little. And then I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, just to kind of bring all those flavors out. Just gonna eyeball that and stir together. And really, that's it. Now, two ways to freeze this. One, if you have an ice cream machine. If you have that, then what you, what you want to do is just cover this with plaster wrap, put it in your refrigerator and chill it until it's cold, and then just churn it in your ice cream machine depending on, you know, your manufacturer's instructions. And sometimes even after you churn it in your ice cream machine, you'll find it's still quite soft. So then what you might want to do is put it into a container and put it in your freezer for an hour or so just to firm that up. The other way, which I'm going to do today, is what is called a still freeze, which means you don't need an ice cream machine. Just take, I like to use a metal pan because we're going to put this in the freezer and metal just, it freezes faster. And just pour it in here. And then you're going to put it in the freezer. I'm going to cover it. Put it in the freezer and just freeze it until it's frozen. The trick with this is, and that will take, depending on how cold you keep your freezer, anywhere between four to six hours. The trick when you're still freezing is to take it out every maybe, it depends how quickly it freezes, say the first, within maybe the first hour, take it out, it'll start to freeze around the edges, and then just take a spoon or something, give it a really good stir, and do that every half an hour to 45 minutes until it's frozen. That way you get some air in, into your um, sherbet, and plus it, um, it, it will be less, it'll be more creamy, not as grainy, because if I just put this in here and let it sit in the freezer and didn't stir it, 
it would become more like a popsicle. And I like it a little more creamy and airy than that. That's why I keep stirring it. And then, so I'm going to do that. And then when we come back, I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So our raspberry sorbet is now frozen. So we'll serve it up. You could use any type of serving um, a bowl, a wine glass, or what I have here. Of course, as much or as little as you want. We'll give it a try. Oh, that's really nice. It's got that tart, yet yeah, kind of sweet raspberry flavor, and then, of course, the milk and cream give it a really nice creamy consistency. Yet there's a little bit of graininess from um, also. So how do you serve it? Well, I really, I just like it like this. Or I love raspberries, so you can put some fresh raspberries over the top. Makes it very nice. You could serve it with uh, vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream or another fruit sorbet. Or you can also just take chocolate chips, chocolate chunks, if you like raspberry and chocolate, which go very nicely together, I think. You just put it over top. Or, if, I mean, if you want to make this kind of a raspberry chocolate, you could fold in some chocolate chips before you freeze it. So I'm going to try that with the chocolate. Yeah, that's really good too. So have fun with this. Enjoy. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.